Hello guys, welcome to Alankar's Pharmacy classes again. Uh, we have discussed the, uh, in our previous video, we have discussed about bright field microscopy, dark field microscopy, phase contrast microscopy, and now the today's topic is fluorescence microscopy. So fluorescence microscopy, as it names itself, describe its principle that is, that it is based on the uh, image that is obtained by fluorescent light. So what is fluorescent light and uh, how it is working, uh, how it works, let us discuss it here. So the principle of fluorescent microscopy is based on fluorescent light. Now what is fluorescent light? That there are some compounds which absorbs UV radiation. That is the radiation of small wavelength. And they starts re-emit the light of higher wavelength of visible range. So that that kind of uh, that kind of phenomena is known as fluorescence. And that kind of components which cause such kind of uh, such kind of fluorescence are known as fluorochromes. So idea is this: if we put the sample along with any dye or fluorochrome, then it will start emitting fluorescence light. And another, other than this, if we, uh, if we anyhow stop the light that, uh, which is not coming from the specimen or sample, that means we will get the background dark and specimen illuminated with, with fluorescent light. So this is its idea. So, the, the compound absorbs the short wavelength. First of all, the compounds which absorb the short wavelength, UV radiation light, will re emit the light of longer wavelength, that is visible light. And for example, there are some dyes, there are uh, uranium ores, and these are known as fluorochromes. And the phenomena is known as fluorescence. So, the idea again, I'm repeating, the idea is this. If the specimen is mixed with fluorochrome, any sort of dye or fluorochrome or dye that produces a fluorescence restricting the other light reaching the eyepiece, reaching to the eyepiece. So there will be a high contrast image with a jet, the jet black background and the image appears in a fluorescence, fluorescent color. So that will be, a, uh, so uh, in this way, we have increased the contrast of the image. The contrast is increased and that's why the, uh, there will be a more clarity in the image of the specimen. So for do, doing this, what we are doing? Here in uh, fluorescent microscopy, uh, we, have, we are using a special kind of lamp. That is a high intensity mercury arc lamp or xenon arc lamp because we need a, a, a high intensity light beam. So let us discuss its uh, ray diagram. So in this uh, fluorescent microscopy, we are using a high intensity light beam uh, coming from xenon arc lamp or it may be a mercury arc lamp. So by using this uh, xenon arc lamp, a high intensity light is produced and that is that passes through a first, first uh, uh, excitation filter. This is actually the primary excitation filter. The work of primary excitation filter, it's, it, took, it, it took cut all kind of radiations and it allows the pass, passing through only blue light. And this blue light, when it passes through the, passes through uh, here, with, by, through reflecting mirror and condenser, it is focused into the specimen, which is uh, placed in the stage. So in this stage, the dye which starts illuminating fluorescent light. So see this fluorescent light, uh, this, uh, uh, I have shown this uh, in a green, uh, green dotted uh, uh, lines. This fluorescent light is further, actually it is, it is a mixture of light, is a mixture of a green light along with a blue light that is coming from here. So this 
a green light, a mixture of a green light and, uh, and a blue light and it comes to the, it instructs to the barrier filter. Now, this barrier filter, the selection of barrier filter is such that uh, this barrier filter is selected on the basis of the, the what, what dye we are using. It may be of, uh, uh, every dye is having a, a specific barrier filter. No, no, here what we, what, what is happening, this the light is the blue light and the green light, uh, together they are coming upwards direction and it, it, it passes through the barrier layer. That, and this, what the barrier, barrier filter is doing, this barrier, the function of barrier filter here is to stop the remaining blue light that is coming through the here and it allows only green light to pass through. And this green light, where it is green light is coming from, this is coming from directly from the specimen or our sample. So in this way, the what uh, uh, image, how the image will look like? Image will look like, a, a, a image is, is, will be having a dark background with a high fluorescent image of the specimen. So this is the, actually the working of this fluorescent microscopy. So now let us discuss the application of fluorescent microscopy one by one. So the first and very important application of this microscopy is immunofluorescence. So what and, and what is this immunofluorescence? Immunofluorescence is a kind of an antigen antibody reaction, and in which we we can uh, we can determine the antigen that is present in the sample of patient serum, and how it works. The in immunofluorescence we are using antibodies that are specific for the antigen that we want to identify. Then these antibodies are labeled with any fluorochrome or a dye. These antibodies, when it is labeled with fluorochrome, are known as labeled antibodies. And these labeled antibodies, when mixed with the antigen, that will uh, bind through its uh, uh, FAB portion uh, to the antigen. And, th and in this way, this antigen glows in the color of dye, which can be seen through this microscopy technique. So this is a, a first and very important application and this is how we can uh, identify the uh, or diagnosis of the some diseases can be performed for example syphilis, chlamydia infections and the presence of rabies virus in the patient brain smears. So this is the immunofluorescence is the one of the very important application part of this fluorescence microscopy. Now the next application, it can be also used to identify the mycobacterium tuberculosis bacteria. So by using the oramin O dye, it is, or because of this oramin O, the mycobacterium tuberculosis adsorb this dye and it glows in a yellow color. So we can identify the this micro presence of mycobacterium tuberculosis in this way. Similarly, bacillus anthracis can also be identified by using fluorescent isothiocyanate dye. It glows in a green color. And this, this is a, another application. And the another application, last application, that it is used to locate virus in infected tissue specimen using antibodies. So uh, if I, we, we, we take antibodies and antibodies, uh, by uh, labeling that old antibodies, we can identify the viruses also that is present, uh, present in the patient sample. So these are the overall applications part of uh, fluorescent microscopy and hope you have liked it. So please be with me in upcoming videos also. We will continue our session in, uh, in, uh, uh, in uh, continue session in the microscopy. Our next topic will be a confocal microscopy. So uh, please do like uh, and please do share with your colleagues and please be with me. Uh, thank you. Thank you you all.